everyone now once again from the overclocker so here's another first for me and this time it's not only in the brand in hike semi but a new capacity the very first 64 gigabyte ddr5 kit i've ever reviewed so usually i tell you about the price of the kit first but right now i actually have no idea where one would buy this locally on amazon or anywhere else for that matter we have hike semi future ssds locally but none of the memory so here's hoping the price is competitive if it eventually gets here and at the very least this is one of the best 64 gigabyte kits on the market based on just the specs alone like semi be it through luck binning or what have you has the second best combination of timings and voltage of any 64 gigabyte kits we can buy locally and that's cdl 32 38 38 at 1.35 volts the only memory with tighter timings is the cl 30 37 37 kit from mushkin in the red line lumina series Hike Semi may not be well known to most people outside of the Asian market, but if they continue with such offerings, their popularity is going to grow exponentially. That said, I have an early set here, so I can't speak to the retail sets, but some information is actually missing from the DRAM. For instance, Hike Semi hasn't filled in the vendor information within the SPD, which in and of itself isn't an issue, but can cause some complications for enthusiasts wanting to break records or even prove that they are indeed using Hike Semi kits. However, the absence of memory information isn't just on the DRAM itself, but on the website as well. You just don't know what timings you are getting on the Hike Semi memory, but it's a gamble you'll just have to play. Right now, however, I can say for certain that all their high-speed kits, at least from 6400 onwards, are Hynix A ICs. Believe it or not, this absence of information is literally the only criticism I can level at the memory, because it literally does everything else exceedingly well, especially where performance is concerned. As you can imagine, this is a dual rank kit, which isn't the best for high speed, but can in some instances offer up to 15% more performance than a single rank kit with all things being equal. The downside of dual rank kits is that they are harder to drive from the IMC and the motherboard. As such, you'll see that motherboard QVLs stop at DDR5 6800, and for the most part, it's actually 6400 as 6800 is super, super rare. You can imagine then my surprise when the future DRAM kit at just 50 millivolts more, that is to say 1.4 volts, was able to do DDR5-7200 CL34. Truth be told, it could even do DDR5-7600 CL36. But at that point, what you lose in latency and the additional 50 millivolts required at 1.45 volts makes the entire exercise pointless for me. Anyway, before we talk about the visuals and all that other good stuff and other aspects of the memory, let's just get through the benchmarks. As per usual, testing was done on the Intel Core i7-14700K, on the ROG Z790 Apex, and of course, it was powered by the XPG Fusion 1600W ATX 3.0 PSU. Footage is captured in the Montec King95 Pro chassis, featuring the Montec Hyperflow ARGB AIO, all of which is available at Woodware, of course. First up, we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. As you can see, out the box, you get 100 gigabytes per second in reads, writes, and copy for the most part. But with an overclock, we can boost these by around 10 gigabytes per second at DDR5-7200. Latency, as we've seen on other kits, is dropped by around 10 nanoseconds from XMP to 7200CL34. 6400CL30 is much closer to the 7200OC than the XMP1 at just 57 nanoseconds. Geekbench 3's memory score test, on the other hand, shows greater gains with 6400CL30 adding 1000 points and 7200CL34 adding an additional 1000 points. Here we can see a 19% improvement in performance between XMP and the Max OC. SuperPi 32M, as usual, scales linearly with memory performance. None of these results are impressive, but between the worst and the best, there's about a 6 second difference in favor of the DDR5-7200 OC. Ycruncher 2.5B is another one that shows little performance gains, essentially each OC setting shaving off one second from the total compute time. Handbrake is the first real-world test that shows you can shave three seconds from XMP to 7200CL34. Note as well that the 7200CL34 settings on this one, or at least on the dual rank kit, is faster than 7800CL36 on a single rank kit, like the one that I reviewed on the last video, even if it's just by one second. We then get to Cinebench R23, and I'm actually thinking of letting this benchmark go as well, as there's just no scaling here for memory for it. There's less than 1000 points between XMP and DDR5 7200. We then get to V-Ray 6 CPU benchmark. Here we can see that much like in Cinebench, the performance gains between XMP and 7200CL34 are tiny. Not really worth it for these rendering workloads with the CPU. 
Finally, we get to the gaming benchmarks and of course, we will be starting with Hitman 3 or World of Assassination. 1% lows in 10 FPS between 7200 and XMP, but the median frame rate goes up by 26 FPS, not bad at all. Note how close the 6400 CL30 setting is to the 7200 CL34 setting. Next is Forza Horizon 5. This game, much like the last one, is running at breakneck speeds already, but as you can see, 6400 CL30 is for all intents and purposes just as fast as 7200 CL34. In Cyberpunk 2077, for some reason, the OC results, at least where the 1% lows are concerned, show sizable gains where we go from 113 FPS to 123 FPS. Not sure if you'd notice that during gameplay, but there is a difference for sure. And Dying Light 2, as the last game benchmark, behaves similarly to Cyberpunk 2077. The two OC settings are close to each other while XMP is dead last. That being said, it's good to see that even if you can't do 7200 on a 64GB kit on your motherboard, you can do 6400 CL30 with ease and largely get the same performance gains. With the memory numbers done, what do I generally think of the memory? Well, let's start with the visuals. Hixemi's Sword DDR5 kit is the one to beat from the vendor. And even better yet, the DDR4 tempered glass DRAM is unlike anything else I've seen from any vendor on the market. It really looks incredible. But with that said, when the future memory is up and running, the DRAM looks fantastic. And of course, the RGB lighting works with every motherboard software you can think of. As such, it's not surprising that Hikesemi hasn't any software of their own. Outside of visual cues confined to the RGB lighting, Hikesemi uses a beefy heatsink on the memory and is thick and features indentations that I assume aid in increasing surface area. And talking about surface area, You'll notice that the operating temperature after an abnormally high load on the DRAM is around 65 degrees on one stick. To the touch, it feels warm, but that has to do with a two dim board placing the DRAM much closer together than they'd be on a regular four dim motherboard. Despite this, the temperature or at least the SPD hub reading was not much warmer than what you would get on other memory. Overall, I'm actually quite excited by what Hikesemi has put together here. So DDR5 5600CL26 is doable and so is 5800CL26, mind you. As such, this is an awesome DDR5 dual rank 64GB kit that's at home on both AMD and Intel platforms. As stated in the beginning, it has the second best combination of timings, frequency, and voltage out of all the 64GB kits we can buy locally. With the super aggressive pricing of high semi products in general, I think the most obvious kit for most people looking for 64GB of DDR5 will be this one. For these people specifically, I can't imagine why you'd bother with anything else. I dare any kit that we have locally to do what the Hikes Heavy Future Kit can do in just timings and frequency and voltage, of course. And with that said, please leave your comments below. Let me know what you guys think of the Hikes Heavy Future DDR5 6400 kit. Until the next time, remember to share, like, subscribe, but most importantly, take care of yourselves. And I'll see you on the flip side. Take care and peace.